Well, greetings, everyone. This is David Arendelle, and I'm excited to share with you that there's another update to the post-secondary peer cooperative learning bibliography. Boy, I've been living with this document for almost two decades. It actually started as part of my dissertation that was completed back in 2000, and each year we've continued to add more and more resources to it. It's exciting to see the outstanding work that is being done by scholars around the world in a variety of major programs that have been instituted in these seven different areas. And I won't read through all of the words here, but just simply recognize there's an enormous body of knowledge that's been created. These programs were selected. There's other wonderful peer learning programs that are out there. I selected these because these have been replicated at a number of institutions around the world. They have lots of data studies. They have a clear explanation of how the practice operates. And also, I think that it has a wonderful track record for the kinds of student improvement in terms of not only their academic achievement and also in terms of their persistence towards graduation, but also for their personal and professional development of not only the students who participate, but also the students who end up leading these groups. I have a couple of websites down here at the bottom of this particular page. One of them is z.umn.edu peer bib. That'll end up taking you to the website that I maintain for the primary bibliography, along with a number of other sub ones that give more focused information inside of their pages. And also there's one other website I put down there, uh, palgroups.org. That represents a um, podcast which I put out. It has not only research studies, but also it has interviews with student leaders of these groups fascinating to listen to their young voices as they talk about what they're getting out of the experience and how they're changing their own future careers oftentimes as a result of their experiences. So whenever you go to the website, the very first thing that you'll end up seeing are several different kinds of bibliographies that you can download. You can download this as a PDF. Just to remind us, there's now at this point more than 1,550 annotated citations inside. The whole thing probably prints out to uh, somewhere in the mid 450s uh, in terms of number of pages. It actually would have been longer, except I went and reduced the size of the font this time, or else I think it would have ended up being somewhere in the high 500s. You can also download this as a Word document. The reason why I provided for you as a Word document is that you can use it and probably you can open it in a number of other software word processing programs. You can end up doing a search for keywords that you want for particular citations that you're looking for. Maybe it's STEM. Maybe it is leader. All kinds of keywords that you could end up using. And also, you can download this as the file of what I use in is EndNote. EndNote can also be opened up in also some other bibliographic software database programs. I highly recommend that you do that. And also make sure if you end up doing that, you also either download the uh, Word or the PDF version of the keywords that I use in order to uh, cite and organize all of these citations. So if you gave me an email and said, David, tell me about all of the um, articles that are involve supplemental instruction and science. I would be able to actually be able to sort the database and be able to give you the file then. So I encourage you to go out there. It's all protected by a, a Creative Commons 4.0 license, so I hope people use all of this. That's the point of why I end up putting it out there. And the great thing is it's not about my work, some of my work's inside of it, 
but probably 98% of everything that's inside of bibliography is by scholars from around the world. So that's one thing that you can get, is you can download the entire uh, bibliography. You can also download only a particular program. So maybe you're not so interested in supplemental instruction. Actually, one of the fastest growing areas in terms of publications is peer-led team learning. I think there's something like more than 400 articles are now uh, and research publications are now in the database. But you can see the other ones which are there that you can download. Accelerated Learning Groups, Emerging Scholars Program, sometimes known uh, because Dr. Uri Treisman is the one who ended up developing that. Uh, Peer-assisted learning program, well, that was the hybrid program that was developed at the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. I was on the development team. It's a hybrid that takes best practices at a supplemental instruction, emerging scholars program, and peer-led team learning, and PAL has been adopted for use at other institutions. That's also one of the other reasons why these particular programs have been highlighted inside of the database that I keep up on research. Structured learning assistance, supplemental instruction, that is the largest of the um, programs which are profiled inside of bibliography. It's now at some point close to 1,000 publications about supplemental instruction since it was developed back in 1973 at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. It's the program that which I'm the most familiar with and I had an opportunity to work with and also video-based supplemental instruction. Well, there's a third category of bibliographies that you can download, and these are the topical ones. These are really interesting because, as I said, I end up doing keyword searches that are inserted inside of the database. So if you end up downloading the EndNote database, you'd be able to do your own kinds of topical searches. Well, this just simply gives you some that I have found useful for my own writing, and I thought other people might find it useful as well. So we can see up here um, 47 publications are mentioned that the facilitator, the student leader of the group, well, they end up reporting that they're developing their own academic achievement. So they're getting something out of it. There's 79 uh, publications that talk about how faculty members are using these peer learning programs to help improve and help to transform their own pedagogical approaches to the classroom. Um, here's 114 of them down here are focused on the participants, those students who participate. Well, they end up getting a lot more than simply higher grades and higher persistence rates. They also are able to report the personal and professional development that occurs, and then you can see all the rest of them up here as well. In fact, look at the largest one, 202 publications that are focused on what is it that the facilitator, the student leaders of these groups, or what are they getting out of this? And I'm working on a number of publications, and I hope you take advantage of these and you do your own research and your own publications. Part of my goal at this point, you know, I've just finished my career, formal career, after four decades in higher education, and now I get a chance to share more, I'm doing YouTube videos, working more with the bibliography. I've got my articles to write, but frankly, we need a hundred more people who are out there doing writing. It's such a rich, wonderful area. Well, since a lot of people I know for my own network are really interested in supplemental instruction. So I went ahead and made a whole uh, list here of SI-only bibliographies in these academic content areas. So there's 57 publications that are about using SI in business and accounting courses, 59 publications in the health sciences, um, 322 publications are looking at use of SI and science courses, and then you see all the rest then. That's the same, same kind of thing that you could do if you downloaded that database. You'd be able to do, well, what would be the use of PLTL in chemistry courses? 
Well, it's built into the database that you actually would be able to do that kind of sort and be able to find the kind of material you need. So if you're in the business of doing article writing, it's a really easy way to do a literature search because every single article that I've been able to find, and I do lots of Google searches and I have all kinds of academic alert programs that tell me about the recent publications and such, well, you can have a pretty good idea of the direct literature. There's more things that ought to go into a lit search, but it really helps you to do that. Or you're in charge of a program at a college campus and faculty members come up and say, well, is there any research articles about the use of SI in foreign language classes? Well, actually, there's five of them that have been published or in these other areas as well. So it's not only something you can use for writing, but also it's something that you can share with faculty members. You're trying to build um, an interest in helping to support the offering of a particular program. It doesn't have to be SI. It could be ESP, PLTL, and the other programs. Well, you can use that with administrators to help build support because sometimes these well-intentioned people don't know about the professional literature. Their professional literature is other things that they're working on. You have the ability to give the evidence to them to help support why is it that they ought to make an investment of money in a program then. So that's the reason why I do part of this bibliography. It helps support my research. And also, I hope that I can be a resource for other people as they're doing their lit searches, their article writing, their advocacy to their faculty members and to the administrators on campus, and also just frankly for your own personal interest. It's really quite amazing to see what's being done. You know, one of the things that is the bottom line when you look at all of these different publications, they talk about what are the key ingredients that you need. It's time. You've got to have enough time in order to manage the program. The students who are the leaders of these programs, they've got to have enough time so that they can prepare and go through training workshops and to be coached and to coach one another. Time is such an important ingredient, and that's the reason why I say that generally if you're looking at which is going to be more important, time or money, well, I'm generally going to argue you need both, but it's going to be this issue of time and having sufficient amounts of it because the quality of the program is dependent upon the amount of time that is spent nurturing, coaching, in helping the program to have the resources it needs. I have all kinds of other resources that are online. Uh, here are four websites that I maintain. Rather than going into them, I'll just simply encourage you to go and to visit those because I have a YouTube channel. I have every word that I've ever written about peer learning programs, the peer bibliography. Here's the address for it. And also lots of training manuals that have been written by other people and, in fact, by other student leaders of these programs. Well, that's inside of the peer learning website. So I hope you take advantage of those. I would love to have a conversation with you. Here's my personal information. Here's my personal cell phone. I'd much rather talk to you than people who are trying to sell me Medicare insurance or whatever it is that the crank phone callers are calling. I would love to be able to visit with you. Here's also my email address here. So. Thanks for watching this particular video here. Thanks for the time that you're spending and in investing your time in your young people. I hope my words are useful to you as you help your students to achieve their dreams. Thanks a lot. Best wishes.